Hi folks, this is Rich Burdess from Datacom Christchurch, New Zealand. This is a re-recording of a, a video I put together yesterday which lost all of its sound after two minutes in, so hopefully this will last longer. Um, the original clip was about 20 minutes or so, um, so hopefully we'll be at the same. Um, and this clip shows you um, an idea or a concept, if you will, of how you could create a, a master branding power app that could control the look and feel, logos, background colors, themes within all the other apps that you have in your organization. The concept behind this is, let's say you've created 50, 60 apps in your organization and you want to kind of standardize their look and feel. Uh, you're just starting out um, and you want to start off with the best practice for some design. This is one way that, that could be used. Um, or you've got all your apps, they look great but then you have a branding refresh or you merge with another organization or you're acquired by another organization, um, all of which will require updates to your look and feel right across your organization. So not just in Power Apps, but this presents a solution where you could quickly fix up all of your Power, Power Apps um, and look awesome um, across the business while they're all still waiting for get their, their branding updated as well. So the solution, um, I'll step you through how it works. Um, I'll show you how it works, um, show you some apps that I've already got preloaded, show the data sources, and then run through how we use this approach to cover our branding. So I'll quickly show this is our the Edit All Themes Power App. It's a standard, standalone power app. Um, don't necessarily need a splash screen, but we put that in there just for fun. Um, and I've got um, in here um, a component which covers my RGB codes for my color schemes. I can manually input those as well. I have a SharePoint library with images. Uh, data sources aren't controlled with components yet, so I can't really create a component to cover images at this point, unless I hard code the images into a table or something in the component. Um, this over here for the font color and the font name um, is also a component. And then on this side here, the Datacom logo and the generic logo as part of the same image library gallery, um, just with a different filter. So a filter for background, a filter for logo. Um, I have a preview here to show me what my scheme may look like when I want to mess around with it and change it. So before I do that, I'll just I've spun up some other Power Apps. Um, I have my visitor registration system, which will just looks got the background, got the corporate branding that we want. Um, I've got a, a mobile site inspection app, standard sort of forms based, go around and take pictures, similar to the Microsoft version of the site inspection app. And then another app, which is a proposal app, which I've demonstrated before, which automatically creates PDFs for people uh, based on creating a quote. And um, there's just a bit of semi transparency um, and some instructions where you can add um, new items and then create a proposal. So let's just jump back um, to the main power app. I bet it's behind this little icon here. Just give me one second. There we go. Cool, got it. I, for some reason, I can't get rid of my PowerPoint uh, menu control, um, even though I've tried to pin and undock. Um, but it's still sitting there. I can't get rid of it. Anyway, we'll move on. So let's do a demonstration of how this works. Let's change our look and feel a little bit. Um, let's pick a white font. I want to go white. I haven't saved any changes here yet, so make a change that I don't want Georgia. Um, and I want to go Lato. Um, we'll change our logo to logo. And today, let's go more. Let's go. Maybe. Maybe. There we go. Let's go with orange. Um, used to work for a company that was blue, and then it became an orange company. That's just kind of relevant. Okay, so let's change change this. What I do is click Save Theme. That's going to run a series of patch statements that we can see the progress happening. We're first of all going to clear out some data sources um, in terms of items that have got um, toggles against them. Um, and then it's going to re-patch all of my themes to a standard data source. And so there we go. Um, oh, I know what I didn't do. I didn't change the background image. Let's do that just for fun here. Let's change that to something different too. Um, there we go. Let's go. Let's go that one. Let's do, there we go. Let's do that. Let's do that again. 
just so you can see all of the changes that would happen through the apps that I've got preloaded. And because the patch thing went quicker than I expected. Um, anyway, let's move forward. So we've still got these apps loaded. I'm going to refresh each of these. Um, and I can't change the color that you see there, the blue, the blue uh, but I can change the other components that will load. So the buttons have come up. My logo's changed, even though it's slightly um, need to make that fit into the space a bit better, but my background image has come through as well. And then if I click into the app, the rest of the branding has been picked up, right? So I've got all of my controls as I would expect to see. Um, same for my little mobile app. Let's refresh that. And there's less info on this app, so it runs a bit faster when I want to load it up. And there we go. I can go jump in. I've got my logo replaced, all my orange color scheme coming through. And then again, if I refresh my quote app as well. And there we go, let's create a proposal. I've come through the, the semi-transparent sort of background there. Doesn't look awesome. Um, the black versus the white, not 100% sure with, but let's stick with that. Um, so how did that happen? Well, first of all, there are two data sources that I use to control this app. Um, I've got a image library in SharePoint and these are all the images that I could put in. Um, probably less is more in this scenario if you want to run patch statements and you want to do refreshes so you don't have too many um, and you choice is good but you don't have too much choice in your organization because you want to have things looking reasonably similar but this is a demo so I'm allowed to put more in. Um, and so what I have in my library, I've got two types of images, backgrounds and logos and then we use um, an L for the logo selection and then a Y for the background. I should have put that B, but we made a Y, but that's cool. Um, and so the, the apps, all of these apps will load that background image based on a parameter and a filter against this data source looking for the two um, logos and backgrounds that, that have got this toggle against them. Okay, and then in, um, I have another SharePoint list. Um, if I click on this guy, where I'm controlling um, the RGB of my color scheme, and then font color, font name. That's all. That's all I'm doing. Um, and then if I jump into the app, drop that out of play mode. Yep, I know that. Um, let's jump into my screen control. I'll show you the patch, and then I'll show you how we use the primary controls. We've got three different levels of control. This one's just using primary and secondary. So on select of my save theme, it's just a simple um, adjust some variables to enable the little loading bar at the top, which is just images um, that come up one after the other based on percentages. Um, we set a new theme so we can refresh the home screen of this particular app so we can check out the look and feel. And then I patched it that. And now that's actually the the original name of our SharePoint column for R. Um, but we, we went with this before we, we toggled the friendly names. Um, and then we've got RGB, the font color, which is the variable, and then the font name. You can see it's a component uh, of the selected font name. We clear out the L and the Y values against any item in our quote images library, which is the images um, library that controls the backgrounds and the logos. So we clear them out first. Um, move through update up 33%, um, refresh the data source just in case there's anything new that's happened, and then jump in and patch back the selected background image and the select gallery logo image as well, and add in the Y and the L. So it's quite simple in terms of what we do there. Um, and then that is it. That is what we've, we've patched. We've patched two data sources, and then we go back to the load screen of the app. So that does enough in terms of toggling the data source. Uh, but what we also need, um, because we need to change the various excuse me, colors and elements across our app as we have some style sheets. So primary controls is the one I'd look at for now. Um, the way we approach this, because there's no easy way, there's all supported way to quickly change your primary theme one, primary theme two, primary theme three main colors in your app right across the app, uh, which would allow us to add in any controls we wanted um, and they would match our app color scheme we created, what we have to do is a workaround. So what we've done here for um, all of our controls is we set up a style sheet. Um, it's a good 
approach um, if you are dedicated, which is good, you should be. Uh, they compare apps, it means what you have to do is basically copy and paste from this screen these various copies and master controls across your app. So if you want to put in a, a label, you don't go insert label, you copy and paste from our primary style sheet because each of these is looking up these two controls, these two, sorry, these two, they are controls, I guess, um, components. Um, and so if I click on button master, if you jump into the formulas of it, you'll see there's a, a few things that are uh, updated. So they've all got the fill is basically the fill of that item, and then the font will be the font that's selected in that item. And so this is follows the same so whole process through this. The one thing we can't change um, through this um, is the uh, tape picker controls. So you need to be able to change those elements by changing the master theme or the primary theme one, primary theme two, and primary theme three, which are JSON parameters, or JSON held in JSON file, which are parameters basically, which control the RGB of those. Um, we can do everything else around it, but we can't change those particular pieces just yet, uh, which is difficult, excuse me, I've got the wrong button, get rid of that. So I did post today another method, for, it's unsupported, but you can do this, you can change these to match your schemes. Um, you just have to do it with a, a downloadable GitHub resource, which is actually pretty cool. Um, doesn't break anything, um, but just not supported at this point. But I just hope that eventually there'll be a way to change these um, easily, create your own themes. But so for now, we are copying and pasting, and then within our app, I'll actually show you the on start of the app. We go out first of all, grab the information from the data source, we filter it by that's the ID of item one, just in case another item goes in. That's set to the RGB colors, the font name, font color. Um, set a couple of variables here as well, and then we set the save color, um, the lookup against that, and set save font. So I can reuse those in my app without having to type the whole formula back in and save save a bunch of controls or save time loading screens. I can just call a variable, uh, and then I also set the file path um, and the base 64. So if you're not logged, if you're storing items in SharePoint and you're not logged into SharePoint and you're using those images from SharePoint, you want them to show in your app. Sometimes they're not going to show up if you just grab in the URL to that image. But if you take the base64, which you can encode via some online converters, you can use this this piece um, to show your images in your app, even if you're not logged into SharePoint, which is a really good workaround. Um, it covers this scenario where you are working remote, you're not logged into SharePoint, you're working from the Power Apps app, which is just a good one to do. And so what we do here grab the first item we can find with a Y, grab the first item with an L, set them as variables, and then we can use them um, across our app as well. So that's that bit, and then to control, say the font, on load, my theme is one. So then we look up um, the app theme, which is the theme of, of the SharePoint list, and then we grab ID equals one, which is the item that has the, the font name, and then just put the font name in there. Now, if I change the scheme in my app, the my theme isn't going to be one anymore. So then we use the, the component font and the selection of font name. Um, so we do the same for colors. If I click on the little color item, the fill for this uh, label is also controlled in a similar method. We just check, is the setting for my theme one? Yes. Um, then grab the RGB values, and we're setting that so that if I do those as um, an RGB color, you can string together variables inside um, a color reference, just like this. So just have to have your four elements, um, and then it will register as a color. So you've got your, um, your R, red, green, blue, um, and then your opacity there as well, which can be a different number if you want it to be. Um, and then so if the my theme isn't one, then we do the same again from the component that covers the themes. Um, and then, so the approach basically is to just copy paste, copy paste all this across any app you want. Um, and then they'll work. And then in the other apps, so all of these guys, when they load, we do a similar um, process. So the same they have. They also have a primary controls 
that style sheet in them, but their users don't see that. Um, and the same for, go back to app start, to unselect something. There we go. We have the same setup. This setup basically to grab um, everything for that app, and then we have basically. So if you if you ever create a style sheet across a power app, you can copy and paste that whole style sheet or the elements on the style sheet. So create a screen, and then just select all of the items that you want to copy across, push them over, and then they um, can be pointed quickly and easily to your on start process, which allows you to cover all this. All right. So if I run through this again, just to show this, so we've got these apps to load up. Um, take that back to our normal look and feel. Go back to the play screen there we go. Yeah, let's edit themes again, just to show it because it's fun, changing your look and feel. Um, go back to datacom. Uh, we'll pick a different blue. Let's go with that blue. Pick our scheme for blue. So incidentally, these are components. Um, I'll go with white, go with lighter, let's save that. If you haven't made a component yet, you should. Um, you could also use those to say, grab a logo by itself. Always put that into your app so for branding as another approach. Um, there we go. So if we go back to blue, refresh that guy. We're going to refresh all these at the same time. That one's done. Ish. It's coming. It's coming. Got the new logo back. Got the item back. Push in. There we go, changed. We've just been acquired by the blue company. We've made everything blue straight away. Same for that one. And also same for that one. So it's it does take a bit of setup. Um, so if you've already made heaps and heaps of apps, it will be a pain to go back and bring them back to a, a model that you could refactor them in, but you may have to do that anyway, so why not make a start on it? If you're just getting started with Power Apps, Think about the future of what would happen if you needed to change colors or if you needed to change logo across all of your apps. You can either build a component to house your logo, build components to hold your color schemes, build data sources to hold your images or your logos, and then build your apps so that they can look for a style sheet inside your app, um, which you can control from a central coordination point. So. I hope that's been useful. I hope for the sound for this whole piece. If you get any questions, please please reach out. I'm always happy to answer them. Um, I'll be covering this topic um, at the Power Apps World Tour event in Washington, D.C. Um, at the start of April um, in a bit more detail with a, with a couple other options that you can use for branding um, and component reuse. So yeah, if you've got any questions or suggestions of what you want me to talk about, then please reach out. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.